Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape, and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are, and building backyard dreams is what we do. Every job starts off basically the same way. Often I do a video before I get out there, and it's more of a video that just kind of gives our crew, Jack, our foreman, the rest of the crew, an idea of what they're gonna get into before they get out here. Jack takes a look at the video and then starts laying everything out. You can see here, Jack's kind of laying everything out with the rest of the team, making sure the entire Aquascape team is on the same page, and what our goals and accomplishments for the day are gonna look like. This particular customer was really, really interested in more of a bird loving stream. She had the perfect layout for it, a nice backdrop, the topography worked in its advantage, and the way the house was situated worked perfect for this babbly brook stream. So very first thing we do on a poundless waterfall is start laying out the reservoir. Here's the top of our aqua block panels. We just use the top for kind of laying out the size of the reservoir. And then Jack starts marking out the area of lawn we're gonna cut out. The easiest way for us to do this is just come in with a sod cutter and we'll strip all this stuff off. Gets the grass down below the roots and uh, makes it really easy for us just to haul this stuff away. We always have all the utilities barked before we go out there and dig. We've located one of the irrigation lines. We're gonna pull that thing off to the side get that marked and uh, either fix it later or have the irrigation guys come out and fix it later. So we've laid out the reservoir in an area where we won't hit any of that stuff, or we think we won't hit any of that stuff, and uh, we start digging. We're only gonna go down about 12, 15 inches deep. Uh, we'll get that thing dug in by hand. All of that soil is gonna get used to create the berm for the waterfall. So you can see we're putting that stuff in wheelbarrows and it'll get transported back. Any extra dirt continues to get hauled off. Rocks show up right on time. Any single time we're doing a one day or two day build, it's really important that the rock is there when we need it. You can see we have plastic mats to protect the lawn. The last thing we wanna do is damage a bunch of the grass. So we put these mats down, not just to protect the lawn, but also use them as a runway to coming into the backyard. The nice thing about working with aqua blocks is the system's modular. So if I need to shift that thing over a foot to the left or a foot to the right, I can do that. This little unit right here is called our first flush system. We're gonna be taking the downspout water it's gonna get pre-filtered out into this, what we call a first flush. The first flush has a micron net in it that'll send clean water over to our reservoir. The idea behind this is taking Mother Nature's gift, rainwater, and putting it into our tank. By doing this, it'll allow the water feature to run longer without her having to use city water to top it off every now and then. So now that we've got the aqua box kind of laid out, we're gonna put in our pump vault. So after reworking this hole several times because of all the different weird utilities we found, this is the layout we're gonna do. We were able to get four aqua blocks in there uh, and then our pump vault. Notice that the aqua blocks sit a little bit lower than the top of that pump vault. This is gonna allow the space for gravel to sit and a little bit of extra pooling water. So the fabric goes down, the liner goes down. Here we've chosen to use one giant piece of liner That'll be enough to cover the entire space of our reservoir and our entire stream. This avoids seams and overlaps and everything else. Once the fabric's down, the liner's down, then we put another piece of fabric over the top of the liner just to protect that liner from some of the sharp corners that can be on those aqua blocks. The vault goes in, the aqua blocks go in around that, and then we'll backfill with some gravel. Another important tool on every job site, especially if everything's gonna be moved by hand, is what we call a ball cart or a tree dolly. This allows us to move these 18 to 30 inch boulders by hand. There's no way we can pick those things up, but we can effortlessly roll them into that tree dolly and move them back to the backyard. Now that our reservoir is totally installed, comes the fun part, place of the boulder. So every boulder has a specific place it needs to go. It's really like building a jigsaw puzzle without anybody telling you what the final picture is supposed to look like. So here we are just kind of moving these rocks in. I often start with my big boulders first. These are the key focal point boulders. They're also used to frame out waterfalls. We think a lot about how to hide the lid for the pump vault. So a couple big boulders in front of the pump vault often help with then holding back some of the gravel. This particular job too is gonna to have a dry stream bed off the end of it. The dry stream bed was really important because of that first flush, the rainwater harvesting thing that we were gonna do. I knew for sure that the amount of water that was gonna come down that downspout and through the first flush was gonna overwhelm that small reservoir. So we had to have an adequate overflow built in. A dry stream bed was the perfect opportunity to take that extra water out of there. You can see here Chris playing around with different boulders, placing the different rocks. Often 
the rocks don't fit exactly the way we want them to based off of our excavation. So don't be afraid to dig out a little bit more or backfill back towards some of the rock that you're setting in there. Believe it or not, five gallon buckets are one of our most important tools. It just allows us to cleanly move rock and gravel around. Trying to move the gravel around on shovels, you're often spilling that gravel all over the place. So we're coming in, we're using those five gallon buckets to, to move that stuff around everywhere. Here we are doing some edges. Edges are just a combination of rock, gravel, and soil. To me, the edges are just as important as the waterfall. It's the one part that's gonna make the pond look natural or the stream look natural or man-made. So focus a lot on your edge treatments. All right, so we've got that bottom area all done. So the aqua blocks are all covered with boulders. The waterfall coming into that space is really done. So now we're trying to lay out that stream. This is where guys start splitting up into different projects. There's a great look at that overflow or that dry stream bed all done. I love doing these dry stream beds. I think it helps the feature just look like it continues to go and go and go, and it makes the feature look more natural. Here, Jack is taking GeoGrid and putting it over the top of our aqua blocks. This will ensure that that small gravel doesn't fall through those cracks in the aqua blocks. As he works on that, I'm gonna to continue to bring in boulders. Just like the reservoir, I'm gonna set my key boulders first. Some big rocks that are gonna be focal points, some other rocks that are gonna frame out waterfalls. And in this case, she wanted a couple boulders as stepping stones to get from one side of the stream to the other. Her dogs love running up and down that fence, so we were gonna give the dogs an easy opportunity to hop across some rocks and get from one side of the stream to the other. Here I'm setting that middle stepping stone. Often those things don't sit in there just right. We'll use that gravel to kind of level areas off. Normally we don't mulch to the end of a project, but here we chose to mulch a little earlier just because things were getting wet. We had gotten some rain and it was just gonna help keep our job site a little cleaner. Here's that reservoir all finished off, tied right in nicely to the dry stream bed, coming in foaming our waterfalls. That middle rock will actually have water coming over the top of it, so we seal up behind that rock, making sure the water goes up and over the boulder rather than underneath and behind the boulder, finding all those different voids. Lights are now strategically placed. Those guys are continuing to do edges, kind of work in a rhythm here where I'll set some big boulders, get key things in, Jack might come behind me, finish off some of the little rock and some edge work, and I just continue to move forward as I get up towards the waterfalls. He continues to trim fabric back and liner as I continue to move up the stream a little further and further. Here we are again backfilling. Uh, the idea of bringing more plants closer to the edge. Love the way that's turning out right now. So most of the stream is done. Now I'm just kind of concentrating on that final waterfall. So we got two frame rocks here. The rock on the left is a little higher. The rock on the right is a little higher. Water is going to come in between that choke point, kind of where you see that V. The one thing I've learned over the years is try not to have a set vision on how your waterfalls is going to look. Set one rock, let your vision adapt. Set another rock, let your vision adapt. If you have two sets of a vision and the rocks won't work with that vision, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Let the rocks kind of speak to you and let them tell you where they're supposed to go. Here I am compacting the soil behind it, making sure things won't settle. I've got my waterfall set at the height that I want everything to start at. I think one of the key things with building a waterfall is set it to the scale of the yard. This waterfall is gonna be set at a maximum of 14 to 15 inches. Putting the spillway is really a super, super easy process. And then I can backfill with soil right over the top of that. Now I'll continue in front of this to level things off, make sure that that thing's not gonna rock to the left or the right, front to back, and then I'm gonna come in and finish disguising this box. Jack's continuing to move right along behind me, finishing edges. Got a couple little things to do over here on the right. These wing walls are so important, just so the rock looks like it's kind of spread out through the property. It also helps a lot with the integrity of the berm, making sure that we're not gonna have any erosion problems a year later or 10 years later. Foaming in some joints. Just making sure water is gonna go where I want it to go. The one thing we always say, if it looks good dry, it's gotta look great wet. Notice I've put in a couple of these little gentle beach areas, an area where the birds can kind of come land. It's also an area where her dogs can kind of walk in and get closer to the water feature if they want to drink out of it. I mean, it's like the ultimate dog drinking fountain. 
At this point, all of us are so excited just to turn it on, and then we keep our fingers crossed and hope it turns out just like we wanted to. And in this case, the water is doing exactly what I thought. I love the way it's splitting around that middle rock. It's got a really nice, gentle flow to it, and I think it just turned out phenomenal. One of my favorite things about this whole feature was the expression on her face when we finished. It's exactly why we do these projects. So rewarding. It's a very physical job, but the physicality of the job greatly is rewarded by the reaction of our customers. I had met with her two years prior to her getting her water feature installed. In fact, she even put an addition on her house knowing that the addition needed to be there so she could take full advantage of what this babbling brook stream was gonna look like. Since then, she's called me several times and said how much her family has enjoyed it, how much her dogs have enjoyed it, and the hours and hours of enjoyment she gets of watching the birds and listening to the sound of that babbling brook. You guys, hopefully you loved this project as much as we loved building it. It was a fun, quick, two-day project, and it was extremely rewarding for us. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me if you like the new format, and we're gonna keep doing this every other week. See you soon, bye.